So now let's welcome our 13th candidate. It's Manuel Loparco. <laughs> You have family, teachers you want to wave at in the, I also in the room? I have my professor here. Oh, actually. they're all here. <laughs> they're so nice. Hello. So, Manuel Loparco, your thesis is about non perturbative aspects of quantum field theory in curved space times. And so, you're doing this uh, under the supervision of Professor Joao Augusto Penodena, Pe Penedones, excuse me, yes. <laughs> Uh, at the Fields and Strings Laboratory. Is that correct? Yes. yes? So let's discover this. Thank you. The image you see behind me is the cosmic microwave background. If you point a very precise telescope to the darkest regions of the sky, this is the image you will see staring back at you in all directions. It's pretty crazy if you think about it, that the universe sort of glows in this particular way. In fact, it was so incredible to the people that first discovered it, that they initially were convinced this was just bird poo on their telescope. That's a true story. For the longest time, they were fighting against some pigeons, until they eventually met a theoretical physicist like myself, who told them that what they were seeing were the last remnants of the Big Bang. But how is it possible that today we can still see the Big Bang? Well, you might know, that if you stare straight at the sun, which you should never do, what you're actually seeing is how the sun looked like eight minutes in the past. And that's because light takes eight minutes to go all the way from the sun to your eye. In the same way, the light that forms this image is coming from so far away that this is effectively a snapshot of how the universe looked like a little time after the Big Bang. The red spots eventually became galaxies, like the one we live in, and the blue spots became empty regions of void. Now, the point of my PhD is to learn how to read this picture. You might think that this is a completely random pattern, but in reality, it encodes a huge amount of information on what are the types of particles and forces that exist in our universe. Um, think about it this way. At CERN, in Geneva, physicists smash protons against each other and study the resulting explosions. The beautiful patterns that come out of these collisions are very sensitive to the fundamental laws of physics. And so by studying them, they can indirectly deduce the existence of new particles, like they did with the Higgs boson. Well, during the Big Bang, particles were colliding against each other all the time at incredibly high energies. And the resulting pattern of all of those collisions is this one. So it's like the universe gave to us the results of the most powerful particle collider experiment we can even imagine, but it gave to us those results all together, all at once, superimposed in one image. So as you can imagine, extracting information from this image is extremely difficult. And in particular, we have to wait for higher resolution versions of it to do what I'm describing. But in the meantime, what we try to do is to establish a mathematical dictionary between features of this image and the fundamental laws of physics. For example, we can prove mathematically how the existence of a certain type of particle implies a certain type of signature in the statistics of this image. Then the hope is that one day, putting together this dictionary with the upcoming telescopes, we will be able to really read the glow of the cosmos, to discover new particles and forces, and maybe to understand the origins of time itself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.